We're back in our integration test where we actually spawn a JSON client here from Restify. It allows us to make API calls against our API and we start up our server. So it has our server set up and the only thing that needs to be running for this guy is MongoDB. You can theoretically put that here. I'm too lazy. I just want to start up my server and close it down each time. I want to assume my database is always running. We have our two calls here, ping and restaurants. We've wrapped them to functions and make them easier to work with. Our ping simply verifies yo dog. I get an object back, and if I get an object, it's pong. And if you were to look, if we were to run our server, npm start, go to our web browser, type in ping, you'll see that it does have an object with a result in data ping. Now for data, not only do you get an object back, but you also get the data that's an array, and in there is 99 restaurant objects. So we're gonna go ahead and validate those. We've already done some work for you. We validated that the response is in fact an object. We've also validated that response the data portion is an array. And we've actually snagged out the first item in the array and said, look, the first item, if we check it using our checker predicate functions, that the errors come back is empty. Great, so let's validate all of them. So I'm gonna do an imperative style, just to make it easy to explain here. We're gonna say all restaurants are legit, not is legit, are legit. See, Jesse Warden's English isn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. So we get our response from our restaurants. To make it easier to read, we'll just set a variable to response to that data. Response to data is our restaurants right here. This is an array that's 99 of these things, right? So if you shrink it, you can see line 3000, there's 99 big old chunks of JSON here. And we'll do the old school syntax of one restaurant's length for let i zero, i is less than lin, and every iteration increase i by one. So we'll get our current restaurant, current restaurant equals restaurants. This will run 99 times because we have 99 items in our array and this will be different 99 times. So let's get our current errors. Say check restaurant, pass in our current restaurant. Now we have to store all our errors. So we'll say const all errors is an empty array. Now this is gonna start out empty and hopefully end empty. If it doesn't end empty, that means that one of these guys triggered checker to go, yo, there's a problem with it. Here's a list of things that went wrong. Say if current errors dot length is greater than zero, uh-oh, all errors, push the problems, current errors. Then at the end of our unit test, we'll say all errors should have a length of hopefully zero. So we'll stop our server here. We'll run npm run integration. Uh-oh, we have a problem. It was all supposed to work. This is like raw data that MongoDB actually gave us. If we look at this item here, it's got an array of errors. So let's go ahead and print out what actually went wrong. So we'll say log, all errors, print it out. Say dot only just to focus on this one unit test. Scroll up a bit. Invalid name must be one character. Now here's the problem with using this. We don't know which one. So let's go ahead and add some metadata to this. We'll say a boom, create a brand new unique boom. Since this runs multiple times, we can create unique booms. We'll say description item, and we'll get our current restaurant ID had some errors. Okay. And the errors, we'll just go ahead and pass those guys there. So instead of passing the, an array and we don't know like who this is, we'll pass in a boom. Rerun our unit test, hopefully we only have one boom. Okay, we do. But now we got a description here and it says item blah, blah, blah had some errors. So let's go find that guy. Something about the name. So let's go, oh yeah, that would cause a problem. We determined that restaurants that don't have at least one character's name is bad. So out of all these 99 restaurants here, the one of them had a bad name. That's not good. But you have a couple options. A, you can tell the database guy to fix it or you can fix it yourself. But I would leave your test broken just to verify it is in fact broken. Or if you're if you're in a hurry, you can say skip. And when you rerun your integration test, it'll all pass, but it'll verify that you're skipping this one for now. I like errors because it says that it's technical data, it's a broken window, somebody needs to fix it, get on it. That is how, ladies and gentlemen, you test multiple items in an array to verify that your checker function validates your input for every single item.